Okay. So we are going to start uh, today in our uh, third lecture uh, with your question. Today we are going to, to cover uh, Taylor series and Fourier. Uh, okay. Today we are going to cover the topics of Taylor and Fourier series and also uh, delta function and Fourier integrals. First, we start with a yesterday uh, problem. How to determine this, the eigenvector from this relation? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we spoke yesterday about the solution of a system of algebraic equation, we have three main categories. The first one is to get unique solution. The second one is to, is to get multi-solution, many solutions, infinite number of solutions. The third one is to have no solutions at all. So we end up with this relation. Both equations have the form, or had the form, x1 and the, the equation 2 was This equation, these two equations are said to be linearly dependent vectors or solution or equations. It means that if I multiply the first equation with minus one, I get the second one. This is a linear combination, which means that I have two unknowns with single equation. Because when two vectors are linearly dependent, they are the same equation. They are not two equations. So I haven't got enough data or enough information about the unknown. I only have one equation for two unknowns. In this case, we Suppose that x2 is a free term, and this free term can take any value, any non-zero value for our case. Thus, I can, I can take x1 to equal 3 and x2 equal uh, 2 times this vector, which is uh, the vector or the uh, uh, eigenvector is tied with or multiplied with a scalar non-zero uh, t uh, value. If I multiply this by, uh, say, uh, point to get uh, four, four percent, so I have to multiply by uh, point two. If you assume t as 0.2, then the vector as the uh, yesterday lecture will be 0 0.4, 0 0.6, okay? So the eigenvector is a family of vector. It's not single vector. Number of vectors taking this form, so, I may choose t equal 1, t equal 2, t equal 3, t equal 100, 1000. All these are regarded as the eigenvector for certain, or eigenvectors for certain eigenvalue. The same occurred for the other eigenvalue. 
I hope this is clear or you need some extra clarification. Is it clear? Do you have any question? Okay, if you have, if you want to discuss this point, we can meet at my office to discuss it. Okay? Uh, for uh, continuing the, uh, yesterday uh, topic, we're going to speak about the matrix applications, the importance of matrix uh, operations uh, like uh, the norm, the determinant, inversion. We have certain items like in elasticity theory, for example, stress and strain tensors, and the relation, uh, which is defined by Hoc law, Hoc's law, where we can uh, determine elastic field. Seismic waves is, itself is an, an elastic, is an elastic wave field. So I can represent the Hoc law or Hoc's law with matrix uh, identities. Calculating interpolation or differential, differential operators for finite difference method. I don't know whether you, you studied uh, or you heard about the method before or not, but uh, you know solution to uh, ordinary or partial differential equations are far from being uh, exact. So. There are many numerical methods used for determining the solution. One of these uh, methods are the finite different method and finite element method, among other methods. Uh, eigenvectors and eigenvalues for deformation and distress problem, uh, like in, in bore uh, holes. Norm, how to compare data with theory as we, we, we give some uh, or a small uh, hint yesterday that L2 norm is measure for the uh, misfit between the data and the model we are doing in this square application. So norm is used in this case for determining the, how, the, how the misfit Okay, it, it, if we have big misfit, so we have big norm, we have low misfit, we have smaller norm. Matrix inversion itself is using for solving tomographic images. We, we, we give small idea about tomography and in the first lecture, we spoke about tomography. Tomography uh, is taken from uh, medicine uh, uh, we speak about uh, we spoke about uh, CT scan. If you are going, you go to to CT scan. It is, it makes slice photos for your body, and then these slices are compared to determine whether there is any defects or so. And this uh, we are we are doing this also for our work in uh, geophysics. We are actually making CT scan at certain depths and then these scans are used to uh, determine the velocity and the subsurface structure at the area of uh, interest. Finally, we use matrix application for measuring stra strain and rotations. Moving to uh, Taylor series. The, the, na the, the name of this series is uh, named after a scientist or mathematician uh, called uh, Taylor. He tried to approximate function or to find the numerical values of functions when some information about this function is known at certain point. The general form is uh, f of x plus dx equal f of x plus f bar dx. f bar means differentiation of the function, the first differentiation of the function f of x plus uh, 1 over 2 
uh, f double bar d x square, the, the second differentiation, and so on, which can be uh, written uh, in the form summation from i to infinity f uh, drive uh, i uh, number of, of, of times equal i from uh, 1 to infinity factor i dx to the power i. Is there any problem? So we have some example of uh, Taylor uh, series. Uh, we have the cosine function, the sine function, and exponential function. In fact, most computer application use the approximation function to determine the values of this function in computing. For example, for example, the cosine function, when, when you use your calculator, the cosine function is not entered in your calculator, but it's approximation to, to cosine. So uh, some, in some kind of calculators, when you uh, write, uh, for example, cosine uh, zero or something, it gives you, might give you 0 0.999, which uh, should be one exactly. But the approximation makes some difference between the actual values and the approximate value. What this is the meaning of approximation. You know, this cosine x, and this is the definition or the approximation of cosine x. The number of terms should be equal to infinity. When we have much more uh, terms, we have much more accuracy. When we truncate the series at earlier stages, then we have Small, uh, we have some sort of error. We have truncation error in the, da in, the, in the approximation we have. When we use much more te terms, the truncation error decreases. But generally speaking, in our work, in our geophysical and realistic work, uh, for certain range uh, of error, it's acceptable. So to, to ease our computation, we truncate maybe at the fourth or third term because the truncation error in this case is accepted to our uh, application. For example, I was saying to my students back in Egypt, like the, the, the balance, when you, when you go for uh, uh, measuring the mass of gold, you need high accuracy because small change in grams is, is a big sum of money. But when you, for example, uh, uh, weigh uh, potato, it's less uh, important. So if there is 50 grams error, it's no problem at all. But if you are weighing uh, stones uh, for building and in, in ton, so uh, error in kilogram is is no, is no big deal, it's accepted uh, in this case. So the truncation, where we truncate this, depends on the application. Generally speaking, uh, we are in our application, we accept to truncate this or to approximate this function after three or four terms. Sometimes it's useful to use this form than using the original form. Dealing with polynomial sometimes is useful and more appropriate in, appropriate in deriving and integration and so on. So, what's the meaning or what does this mean in plain English? Uh, you know uh, Archimedes or Archimedes who was uh, uh, discovering uh, Archimedes, yes, uh, but he's uh, Greek, and I guess they are saying Archimedes, maybe. maybe. <laughs> uh, uh, he said, uh, give me the value, oh, no, not, he's not saying, he, 
he, the, 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 the author imitate what he, if he explains this, give me the value of the function at a single point and the value of first and second uh, and so on uh, derivatives at, this, at that single point and I can give you the value of the function at any point. So, using Taylor expansion series or Taylor approximation, we can define the value of the function knowing just the value of this function at, cer at certain point and also its derivatives at, certain, at this point. Now we have example, we have some function. We don't know what this function is. This function, we need to find its value at uh, x equal uh, 6. Uh, given that we have the value of this function at 4 equal 125, the first derivative at the, at the same point is 74. The second derivative is 30, the third derivative equal uh, 6 and all other higher order derivatives of f of x are equal to 0 or are uh, approaching 0. Very, very small that we can assume it equal 0. To solve we use the, the relation itself and then we, we must define h so the point is, or the, the function is defined at, at point 4 and we want to define it at point 6. So the step is, the step here is 2, the step here is 2, then f of 4 plus 2 equal f of 4 which 125, the first derivative times h which is 2 which is 64 times 2 the second derivative times 2 to the power 2 which is 4 factorial 2 plus and so on this yield the final uh, solution 341 so knowing this information at certain point we can define the value of this function at any other point Now, we, we move to Fourier series. Fourier series can be considered as one of the most important series in our uh, study, in our geophysical or seismic work, or even in potential field study. Uh, it assumes first that the function is periodic and symmetric this function is symmetric and equal zero at both ends. The, the function here, but not, uh, we can use any other type of function, but the most important point that we must keep into consideration is that it must be periodic. The relation or the Fourier series, uh, f of x, this is also an approximation to any function f of x equal a null plus summation over n, a n sine 2 by x n over 2 l. Where uh, a null, this uh, coefficient equal 1 over l, some uh, integral from 0 to l, which is the, the length, f of x dx, while a n equal 2 over L, integration from 0 to L, f of x sine n by x over L dx. Uh, geometrically, or uh, in, in other words, we, we, we can say that uh, I am approximating the original function using sine or cosine or both function this sine and cosine function are both with different frequencies and different phases. So
Suppose I have time series in this form. Do you know anything about superposition theory? You know, you know it, okay? Yes. Superposition means? When two? You, you are speaking about geology or uh, or <coughs> geophysics? <laughs> physics? No. Superposition in physics means if we have two waves, <laughs> these two waves uh, propagate in the medium without effect, uh, without feeling each other, but the amplitude at any point equals the summation of the amplitude of each of these waves at this point, okay? So, yes? So, we, we can, using Fourier series, approximate this time series by number, say, suppose this is harmonic, having same uh, frequency, and something like here is another frequency and some, something like this, another frequency and so on. So, if we I sum these frequencies, we have different frequencies, different in phase mean if I have two uh, Two, uh, as an example, two, uh, two waves, this one and this, another one. So this means phase, different in phase. This is a difference in phase. They are either in phase, out of phase, and this causes uh, the destructive and constructive interference in superposition in, in physics and also in geophysics. Okay, so what this means that I can approximate the time series, this f of x, with series or number of sine waves. These sine waves has, have different, uh, these sine waves have different uh, frequencies defined by this value and also different phases. So summing this up will provide this one. Okay? And this is very important. We go, we're going to, to bring, to go back to this point later when we speak about transform. Uh, transform is like, uh, uh, is used to, to, to get the spectrum. So the, when you, uh, you, you, you study the, uh, the spectrum of the, of the white light, the sunlight, the so you study when you put it in, in the prism, and it, it, it is, it's a spectrum, it's related to seven uh, colors beside the ultra uh, violet and infrared, non-visible non uh, energies. So all, all this, this is a spectrum, which means that the, the, white color, the white light is composed of these seven colors. If I, I get these seven colors and mix it together, I'll get the light one back. <clears throat> so we are saying also this is to, to get the spectrum of this time series to know the frequency content. This is generally speaking what is meant by the spectrum or the transfer. So, as we have said, the approximation of a function f of x is uh, superposition or summation of certain or, or several seri uh, sine or cosine waves with different frequencies and different phase. But what about this term? This term represents the so-called baseline correction. This represents the DC. 
has no, it's not, this is DC. DC amplitude, it's a, you can, you may write it something like that here. Straight line with frequency equal zero, okay? In, in geophysics, The trace here should be zero amplitude, and the amplitudes are generally, generally distributed on both sides uniformly of this zero level. Sometimes due to some circumstances, some problem may be in the, in the recording, this zero level becomes here. So this value required to be corrected and bring brought to its uh, proper location, which at the zero point or zero level. Uh, defining the periodic function. Uh, periodic function is a function that repeats itself in regular intervals or periods. The most important example are the, are the trigonometric functions, which cosine and sine uh, functions, which repeat over the interval of two pi in radians. Periodic functions are used throughout science to describe oscillations, waves, and other phenomena that exhibit periodicity. Any fu function which is not periodic is called a periodic, which means I cannot use it in Fourier transform. So uh, suppose uh, you get in a in, in, uh, problem or exam that uh, you have some uh, function and we want to, to, to estimate the Fourier transform, uh, I should have first I should first start by defining, uh, 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 make sure or uh, uh, testing whether this function is periodic or not. Then after test, or if, if for example the question is that this is non-periodic or aperiodic function and find the Fourier transform and you should not go through, you should stop, you should, no, Fourier transform is used only for periodic functions. Now we come to the problem of Fourier transform. The problem is that we are trying to approximate function f of x by another one. This function is consists of n sum over n orthogonal functions, phi of x, Weighted, weighted by some coefficient a n, a subscript n. So the most important part here is to define, was, is to know what is the meaning, first to know what is the meaning of orthogonality, and then to test whether the basis function, the function I'm, go, I'm going to use to represent the function, the original one. Is this function orthogonal or not? Uh, our strategy is to, we are looking for optimal function in a least square sense. This one is a least square. You, you studied least squares before or you, you didn't meet? Least squares, never? 
uh, we usually uh, study least squares for curve fitting, linear curve fit. Uh, you study it or no? Okay. So our objectives, our objectives in least squares is to minimize this value. This value in least squares, this one is the, the true model. And this one is the calculated model. So in all our work, we have true model and calculated model. We have observed data and calculated data. Our objective is to minimize the measure or the distance between the observed one and the calculated data. So this is done by L2 norm at each point and getting, taking the sum, which equal in this case for Fourier transform, the uh, integration from A to B, this is a window, A and B uh, represent the window or the length of the signal, uh, F of X minus G subscript N uh, of X, this is squared, you know, in, in L2 norm, we square the distance between the observed and the calculated to override the effect of plus minus cancellation. If we, uh, we, took, we take without the, the square uh, value, you, you know some, some points are occur. This one is a calculated model or cal calculated data. while the observed looks something like that. So this, this value, if we suppose this as a positive, then this, this one will be negative. So if I'm not using the squared value, the positive and the negative values will cancel each other and I will end up with nearly zero error, which is not correct. So in L2 norm, the distances are squared and summed, which means that I am taking the absolute distance or the Euclidean distance between the observed and the calculated. This norm should be minimum. We are going to, to make this norm equal to uh, minimum. A good choice for the basis function here are uh, the orthogonal one. Here we are going to use, the, as you see in the previous uh, slide, the cosine and the sine function. And the cosine and sine functions are actually orthogonal. But what's the meaning of orthogonal? Orthogonal uh, function, uh, we can lend the definition from orthogonal vectors. When two vectors are perpendicular to each other, the scalar product of these two vectors equal zero. You studied vectors. You are third level now. So orthogonal or uh, perpendicular vectors. So orthogonal means perpendicular. So the product between the two vectors equal zero. So here in this case we have two vectors f and g. Excuse me. Yes, you, you, what was the question? I didn't hear about this, this, that uh, for orthogonality, you're speaking about orso of the orthogonality? Uh, the meaning? Yes. Meaning that these two basis functions are perpendicular to each other, which means that 
like this one. This one is F1 and this is G. These two vectors are ben perpendicular. The sum of multiplication of this, or scalar multiplication of this vector equal zero. As an example is, uh, you know, the directional cosines, okay? You know, I, J, and K. These vectors are orthogonal. This one is 1, 0, 0, I. Okay? This one is 0, 1, 0. The third is 0, 0, 1. If you uh, multiply any two of these vectors zero. scalarly, the, the net will be, if uh, suppose we are going to, to multiply i times j. So it's 1 multiplied by 0, 0 multiplied by 1, and plus 0 multiplied by 0. So here, this, this term is 0 and 0 and 0, so the net is 0. So these two vectors are orthogonal. And if you multiply j times k, it will give also 0. So this is the mean of orthogonality. Uh, as an example of periodic function, uh, we assume the use of uh, the so-called piecewise continuous function taking the form f uh, of x plus 2 pi. An example here is x square function. So uh, this wise function means the function is defined as by sub function for the interval uh, of definition of this function. So this function f of x plus 2 pi is defined by this sub functions from uh, say from minus 12 to minus 6 and from or 7 minus 6 to and so on. So these are the piecewise function we are speaking about. And as you see, this function repeats itself at certain interval. Do you have any objection? Repeats or not? Repeat? Okay. So we want to approximate this function with the linear combination of two by periodic functions, like this for one, cosine x, sine x, cosine two x, sine two x, uh, extra, which can be written in mathematical form in the form uh, half a z e null plus summation from k to n, and n here uh, represents the sampling of the, uh, the function itself. It's a number, here it, it, uh, uh, we, we, we removed l and we used uh, l, uh, n instead. It's a number of sampling of the interval of the function. a subscript k cosine kx plus b k sine kx. How to determine the Fourier coefficient? Starting from this, as we, 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 have, say, we have just said that this is the, looks like L2 norm or like least squares, and we want to make this equal minimum. This is analogous to this one, which is the differentiation of the function or the expression in terms of the coefficient, and we want this differentiation to be equal zero at the last. Using this, we arrive to this representation, which lead to the definition of the, uh, the coefficient of Gn as a 
k is uh, 1 over pi, integration from minus pi to pi, f of x cosine kx dx, and for pk, it's 1 over pi, integration from minus pi to pi f of x sine kx dx. Now we have example for uh, a function, it's a piecewise function f of x equal absolute uh, value of x, where x is defined between minus pi to pi. Uh, so we have this function in blue one. The red one represents the Fourier approximation. As you see, we have some approximation that fits better than others. Approximation with fewer n, fewer number, is far from the original one. When you inc increase n, your approximation becomes more closer to the actual function. So, Returning, returning to this point, I am representing the original function or approximating the original function with another similar type of function. Uh, according to the objectives of the work, I am choosing the accuracy. So if we are going to work with some low frequency, we, we do not have to use high n. And if our approximation is our application is regional, so we, we don't have to, to to waste a lot of time in computation. But when uh, dealing with very uh, very uh, narrow zone or something, I have to uh, use high approximation to minimize the error. You know, the error hide the features. One of our, our objectives in seismic data processing is to make features clear for interpretation. As we, we have said before, that it's now the, the hydrocarbons, the oils and gas are hidden in buckets. It's not like, like uh, earlier days, it was gigantic, you know? In, uh, in, in some places, oil uh, was uh, going to the surface flowing to the surface in, in Persia and, and, and some other places where uh, those people who, who uh, for example, who, who, uh, br um, who prayed for, for fire, for example, they were moving and find the fire that never ends. This fire come from the seepage of, of oil to the surface and uh, the, the fire lasts for many, many, many times. So uh, by we are, uh, time, those uh, gigantic oil field near the surface is depleted. And now we are looking for buckets. So this is the importance of seismic data processing, that how to make these buckets clear, how to hide, how to uh, minimize the effect of error. So, in earlier days, seismic data processing was very primitive, but in these days, seismic data processing is very complicated and very advanced. We have another example here for the x square uh, function. I, I guess it's uh, more clearer here that for this one, this is n equal one. You see there is a lot of differences. Difference is big between the approximation and the actual function. But when n increases to about 11, you see the, the function nearly uh, approximate the uh, original one. What are the importance of Fourier series? In Fourier series, we are, we are using Fourier series for uh, defining filters. We are going to speak about this topic uh, later in this uh, course. 
So filtering low, high, and band bus depends on the use of the mathematics of Fourier series. We also use Fourier series for generation of ra random media or random data. Uh, data analysis for uh, periodic contributions, like for example, tidal forcing. Tidal forcing is one of the periodic data. You know, the tide, the moon yes. is moving uh, or, uh, around the, 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 the earth, uh, and, and uh, uh, the, the place just below the moon is yeah, pulled to the moon, which means that the, uh, the, the, surface, the surface of the Earth increases, and the other one <coughs> is, is lowered, you know. This can be seen on shore lines, you know, shore lines. You, you, uh, sometimes you, you find the water is, is high, and sometimes it's very uh, low. Earth's rotation, electromagnetic noises, day and night variation. Uh, finally, the pseudo-spectral method for function approximation and derivatives. Well, in, in other words, we can use the Fourier transform for solution of problems uh, inherited from wave propagation in uh, media, or even if we are um, assuming certain uh, problem. As uh, mathematicians uh, differ from uh, our work, they may uh, uh, imagine certain situation and try to solve the problem in their, this imagine uh, media. And then we as a geophysicist or, or physicist use this result and try to project their, their result to real uh, media. Uh, delta functions are, is, very, is very important and it's uh, really it's a weird uh, function. Uh, for example, the definition of delta function when I'm saying delta t equal delta t equal uh, zero at all points and equal one at t equal zero. This is the definition of delta function. Uh, the geographical representation of delta function here at t equal zero this is a delta function. Equal zero at all points, but equal one at t equal zero. Okay, so I don't know whether you, you, you heard before in reflection uh, seismic method about impulse response, unit impulse response as a source, unit impulse response. This is the, is, the, is the unit impulse when convolved with the media, the, the reflection coefficients, the synthetic seismogram represented is called unit impulse response, okay? So what, what are the features of this one? Integration from, from minus infinity to infinity of delta function times f of t dt equal f of zero. Integration itself can be seen as summation. Integration itself is a summation. So, okay. So I am summing, summing all the value of delta t times f of t for all values from minus infinity to infinity. This value is zero for all points, but at t equal zero. So it becomes delta t equal one times f of zero, which equal 
f of 0. Whatever the value of the function uh, f at the point 0, we get this condition. The integration of delta t dt equal 1. Delta t equal 0 for any t not equal 0. OK? Uh, we have this important, important properties. Uh, f of t times delta t minus a equal f of a. Uh, when you uh, write this, t minus a, so the point, this point is shifted to point A, OK? This, you, you are shifting the, 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 the point where delta t equal 1 to the point A. Because our objective is that this argument of the function should equal 0. So t minus A equal 0, which means t equal A, maybe at this point, this delta t minus A. Uh, also, delta scalar time t equal 1 over the absolute value of a, delta t. And finally, delta t as the integration of the exponential i omega t d omega from minus infinity to infinity scaled by 1 over 2 pi. The importance of delta function, it's uh, used as uh, input to any system, Earth seismometer, or any other uh, system, which is, we, we, in, in seismic exploration, we, uh, we hope to get source that mimics delta function, that looks like delta function. Uh, we use delta function as description of seismic source signals in time and space especially with Mij, which is a moment tensor uh, in source, moment tensor inversion. This, in, uh, this equation is used in earthquake seismology to, to define the, seismometer, the, the seismic data or the Earth uh, movement uh, due to uh, the source. This is a, excuse me, this is the source representation for determining afterward uh, the source, the, the ground motion time series at certain location. Uh, finally, as input to any linear system uh, response function, green function. Uh, we hope to speak about this uh, later, or maybe in, in some free lecture if, if, uh, if we have time and the possibility. Uh, the final point to, to finish the mathematical, uh, the mathematical foundation, and, and from tomorrow we are going to, to speak about seismic and the, the, the data, is a Fourier integral. Fourier integral, in fact, is a Fourier transform. It's, it's uh, determining the, the spectrum or, the, or moving from time domain to frequency domain and from frequency domain to time domain again. To move from frequency domain to time domain, we use this relation, f of t equal 1 over 2 pi, integration from minus infinity to infinity, f of omega e exponential i omega t d omega. So here I am uh, summing on d omega. Omega is 2 by f, the angular frequency. Uh, when trying to, to go from time domain to frequency domain, I use this relation, integration from minus infinity to infinity, f of t, the function in time domain, exponential i omega t dt, uh, here is summation over dt. Uh, I guess this is, there is a problem here, this one is, I guess, minus omega t. The second the relation, it's minus omega t, okay? Fourier integrals are used for also for filtering, generation of random data, for data analysis, and also like the one for Fourier series. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this today's lecture. Okay.
Thank you.